In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this drop down menu in Figma using components, variants, and interactive components to create this prototype. Over the past couple of videos, I've been working on a Pinterest clone in Figma just as an exercise to develop an eye for good UI and UX. And this is the design I ended up with. I even made the design responsive by creating breaking points for it so that it would respond to changes in the width of the canvas. But if we present this design, you can see that this design is not interactive. The only interaction happening here is that the page is scrolling. If you have a look at the frame holding the components here, you can see that I almost created a component for every element inside the page. I created a new Figma community file just for this video. In this file, there are two pages, the starting point and then the drop down menu. So let's have a look at the starting point page. We have three frames over here, the screenshot. This is just a screenshot that I took from Figma to act as a reference inside the page, just a quick access reference for the drop down menu that we will create. Then we have the design itself. It's the same design. We're not going to do anything to it because the changes that we are going to make are already inside the header component. By making the changes to the header, they will take place inside the design. So we'll just use this to present the design. And the last thing we have here is the components frame. I move all the components in the other files and I kept only the components that we are going to use for this file. So we have the header, we have the profile image, and then we have the drop down button component. The design already includes an instance of the header component. So any changes we make to the header will take place inside it. And these two components, the profile image and the drop down button, there are already instances of them inside the header itself. They are nested components inside the header. So if I make changes to them, they will take place inside the header and therefore they will take place inside the design. Now let's have a look at the drop down page. The only changes that I made are inside the components frame. Let's look at the first step I took to create the drop down menu. Step number one. First thing I did was create a hover variant for the drop down button so that when we hover above the button, it changes from this default state to a hover state. How do you create a variant? Let's go back to the starting point quickly. Let's zoom in on this button. So if I select this button, it's already a component. So if I go to the design panel, variants, you can see that there's a plus button. It says add new variant. So I press on it and here we have a new variant. Variants have different properties and by default it's called property one. So I changed the name to state just because it makes more sense. And I call this state hover. The name doesn't matter much really. So if I go to the first one and select it, you can see its state is default and the second one its state is hover. Later on, we will create a third state, which is an open state, but the buttons look exactly the same. So to create the hover effect, all I did was press O to grab a circle, drop a circle over there here. I gave the circle the color style that I already took from an image of the Pinterest design at the very first video of this playlist. So I gave it the gray two color style. Then I constrained the proportions and changed the width to 35 pixels. And to put this circle behind the bottom inside the components frame, I grabbed it from the layers panel and I dropped it inside the hover component but it's outside the frame so I will just use the keyboard up key to push it in place it's above the button so I will just grab it and put it below it and that's it you can try to center it the buttons are not connected so to connect them you need to change to prototype settings now we are in design settings to so to change to the prototype panel just press over here or press shift E and then we will select the default state and grab this node and connect it to the hover state, not to the circle, to the hover state and release. And then we will have this interaction details. So instead of on click, we will make it while hovering and we will leave it changed to the hover state with an instant animation. So basically when we hover above this default state, it's going to change to the hover state. Now, if you present it by selecting the design frame and pressing on the present button, you can see it in action. So if I hover above the drop down button, you can see changes to the hover effect. It's not clickable yet, but step one is done. Back at the drop down page, before we create the third state, the open state for the drop down button, we're going to create a component for the items that we will use inside the menu. This component will have a variant for each of the items that we have here 
and also a variant for the hover states for each of those items. But why not just create the menu directly? For multiple reasons, if we look at the screenshot of Pinterest's drop-down menu over here, you can see that there are items that are repeated multiple times inside the menu, like this title, for example, it's repeated one, two, three times, and then this text item, it's repeated one, two, three, four, five, six times, and the text and link icon item, it's repeated two times. So by having a component like this over here, we don't need to create the same item multiple times. We just created one time inside this component and then we grab it and take an instance of it whenever we want to use it. So for example, I can grab the title and use it over here and here and here. I can grab the user from here and put it. So basically we'll grab items from here to make up this menu. Now what this allows us to do is that instead of changing the same item multiple times inside the menu, let's say that I realize that I need to change how the title looks instead of changing it two times or changing the text two times, I can just go to the component over here and change it one time and it will update everywhere. Another reason is those items appear in different places in the Pinterest website, in other little menus, in different pages as well. So instead of creating the item over and over and over, I will just grab an instance of this component. And again, if I update it, it will update everywhere all over the pages of my website. A third reason is some of those items have a hover effect and by creating them inside this component and creating a variant for their hover effect, this simplifies using them inside the menu. Otherwise I would have to create multiple menus each time I hover above one of those items. So it's a little bit like defining a function in coding and then using this function across your code. This might be a little bit difficult to wrap your head around, but if you use it multiple times, it will make sense. To create this item component, it's the same way we created the drop down button. We have a variant for each item in our menu and the items that have a hover state will also have a hover variant. So if I press Shift E to switch to prototype, you can see that the text is connected to the text hover and the text and link is connected to, to the text and link hover the user is connected to the user hover. Again, just the same as we did with the drop down button and its hover state. I'm not going to recreate it over here, but while I was doing it the first time, I wrote this guide that shows you in step by step how to do the whole thing. So if you go over here to the outline, you can see all the steps are over here and step two, create menu items components. So if you click on it, it will take you to the specific steps you need to take to create the menu item components. So if you want a detailed way of doing it, just refer to the article. And this was step two. Step three is to actually create the open state variant by selecting the hover variant that we created in step one and then pressing on this plus button to create a variant out of it, switching to prototype, connecting it with a click interaction and then to add the menu to the button is pretty easy so we can actually do it together just grab one of the items i'll grab the title even outside here and then press shift a to add an auto layout frame around it this auto layout frame will be the menu itself so let's rename it to menu and then using the design panel just add a fill to it from over here you can also add rounded corners since this is the style of pinterest's website and add an effect a drop down shadow effect, but it doesn't go in one direction. So just make the X and Y zero and then it goes in every direction. So add a 30 pixel blur to it. And if we zoom in on it, you can see that this blur behind it is making it easier to read. And finally, select the item that we took from the menu items component and press command C, command V, whoops, select the item itself, command C, command V. Then command V, command V, command V, command V, command V, as many times, as many items as you want to have inside your menu. And then we will leave the first one as title. The second one, you can change it to whichever variant you want. So let's make it user. Let's leave this as title. And then let's make this text. Let's make this text and link icon. We can make this text again. It depends whatever your website will look like. We can remove this and then you can just update the text. So maybe this will be user instead of username. We can actually write a username over here and here we can change this to whatever links to put it inside the open state, just the same as we did with the circle. So you just grab it from the layers panel and you put it over the open state and then you push it using your arrow keys in place like this. And this is steps three. By now it should be working fine as a drop down button, but to show you how you can actually use this to build a 
fairly realistic prototype. I also created another page over here just by getting a copy of this design and removing everything inside it except for the header and footer. Just wrote the word settings inside. I then selected the settings item over here and I switched to prototype, shift E, and then I connected the settings item to the settings page. So you can see that you can connect all those items to other pages inside your design. And I also went inside the header and connected this icon to the home page. So now any page that has the header, if I click on this item, it will take me to the home page. Also any page that has the header and drop down menu will also have the settings item and I can go to the settings page. So let's have a final look at it by presenting it. And here it is. If I hover above the drop down button, it will change from the default state to the hover state. And if I click on the hover state, it will change from the hover state to the open state. Inside the menu, if I hover above any of the items, they will change from their default state to their hover state. I can connect those items to pages, to other pages inside our design to create a somewhat realistic prototype. So if I click on settings, I will navigate to the settings page and inside the settings page, since it has an instance of the header component, again, the same functionality of the drop down button is working. So I can hover above it, I can click on it, I can click on things over here. And if I press on the home button, I can get back to the home page again. And that's it for creating the drop down button. If you are still confused about some steps in the middle that we went quickly over, you can refer to the article on my website and you will also have a link to this file in the description and first comment of the video so you can open the figma file duplicate it and you have a copy of it in your drafts folder and you can play with it and you can look at exactly what i did to create this menu if you want to know how to make a design like this from scratch you can go to the pinterest clone figma playlist where i start by creating a prototype each video i just take one step to creating this design